Hello there, you're watching Danski, the place to be to develop your creative skills and grow as a designer. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to work with layer masks in Adobe Photoshop. Now, if you follow a lot of my tutorials, you'll notice that I do use layer masks quite a lot. And today we're going to be going back right to the beginning and we're going to be covering the basics of adding layer masks. Now, why might you use a layer mask? Well, if you work with the eraser tool, for example, this is quite a destructive way of working. Now, that sounds very dramatic, a little bit over the top. But when you erase part of an image, the only way to undo it is to literally go to edit, undo or step backwards. You have no control, no flexibility. And so if you go further ahead with a project and you need to recover part of an image, you can't without going back, it's gone. But with layer masks, you can remove part of an image, you can add it back in and you have all of that flexibility and you can even delete the layer mask at the end if you decide you want to just have the original image. So let's jump into it. I've got an image here on screen and you can see it's all flattened to a background layer. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click and duplicate this layer. And we'll switch off that original background and then just add another layer. And we're just going to fill this layer here with a solid color. So I've just picked another color and using the paint bucket tool, I'm just going to fill this and I'll just double click and call this color and lock that layer. Now, of course, you can't see this big block of color because it is hidden behind the image here. So I'll just call this layer image. In fact, let's just get rid of that background layer. So we have our block of color and we have our image. Now, if I select the image and go up to layer down to new uh, layer mask, there we go. So layer mask and you have reveal all and hide all. Now, if I select reveal all, you can see that it adds a layer mask and it's filled with white. So the image looks exactly the same. If I just go back a step and do that again, go layer, layer mask and hide all, you'll see that it creates a new layer mask and that is black. So it's actually hidden my entire image now. And with the layer mask selected, you can press command or control I and you can see that it swaps the color around. And you can drag that layer mask to the trash delete and you can also create layer masks from the bottom of the layers panel so you have this icon here add new layer mask and you can click that to add a white one and you can hold down the alt key and click it to add a black one so it just depends whether you want to create a mask on the image and still see that image or create a, or add a mask and then hide your image so it depends which way around you'd like to work either way you can get to the same result so if we add a layer mask here, and you can see that the layer and the layer mask, you can toggle between them. That's very important because sometimes you might be working on something and you'll have the mask selected when you should have the layer selected or vice versa. So just make sure that you've got the right one selected. If I start using the brush tool, for example, on the image, I am actually drawing on the image. Whereas if I switch over to the mask, my color palette becomes black and white. You can see I selected a red there and it just turned that to the equivalent shade of gray. And it will remove that from the image and show the purple underneath. Now we have this linked. We'll come back to that in a moment though. Now when masking personally, I like to use black and white. It's a lot easier using black in the bottom left corner here and white in the top left corner, just because when you start to use gray, it only removes part of the image and uh, it's a lot easier to use the opacity settings for the brush. So at the moment I've added a white layer mask to the image and I'm going to select black and click OK. And this is all with the brush tool. So you can go and select one of Photoshop's default brushes. You've got the harder brushes here or the soft feather brushes, whichever one you like. And you can use the left and right square brackets to decrease and increase the size of those brushes as well. So because we have our layer mask set to white is set to reveal the image. If we're using black, you'll see that if I draw with the brush, so we're using that nice feathered brush over the image on the mask, you can see it actually shows that on the mask as well. Now what it's doing is effectively it is literally erasing the image without using the eraser tool and allowing us to see the image behind. So if I went and added, let's go and add another layer. We'll add some bright green 
in between as well. It's not really bright green, but it's a green nonetheless. So I've added a load of green there as well. You'll see that this layer mask actually hides the image. So we're just painting out the image and it completely reveals what's behind this horrible green mess and then our block of purple. However, now that we've completely removed our image, I can select the mask again. That's the layer mask here. And you can see it's now black, of course. And if you press D on the keyboard, it will set your black and white colors for the color picker to default. And you can toggle these by pressing X. So you can see here, if I press X on the keyboard, it swaps the foreground and the background color. And if they're set to black and white, this is perfect for masking. So of course, if I have black selected and the layer mask and I'm painting more black, well, it's not really gonna do much because it's already completely hidden. However, if I press X on the keyboard and it swaps to white, you can see now I can actually paint back in and you'll see that big white smudge there indicates the part of the mask that I've revealed. And we can effectively reveal this mask. So what you can do when retouching, if you were cutting the image out, for example, is you might press X to swap to black and you can start cutting out the image. This isn't the best way to cut out an image, by the way, but this is just me showing you an example. So I'm cutting out my image here. It's all going brilliantly well and I slip. Oops, I've just gone into the image. Just press X on the keyboard to swap that black and white on the color picker. I can just quickly undo that mistake, press X again, and I can carry on. So I'm using black to cut away from the mask and reveal the purple block of color behind. And then I can press X and swap those colors around and then use white to paint back into the mask. So you can see here, I'm just brushing along the back of the neck, just trying to get that as close as I can. And this is very useful when retouching. You know, you can brush, brush, brush. You go into the image a bit, you press X to swap that black and white color around, and you can just touch that up there. And press X again. And effectively, this kind of process can be you know, you do a little bit of work, you press X, you swap those colors around, press X, swap them around, press X, swap them around. So you can very quickly swap between cutting out of the mask and then adding back into the mask, literally, really, really easily. So let's just go and remove a little bit more here to show you this next bit as well. So we've kind of finished cutting out this part of the image and we can see the purple background coming through. Fantastic. Now at the moment, if I were to click on the image and move this around, you can see that the layer mask has the link icon between the layer and the mask, and it moves around together. That's great. However, if I unlink this, the layer and the layer mask are now separate. So the layer mask will stay exactly where it is. It's not gonna move. And if I click on the image and move it around, you'll see that the image moves, but it doesn't adjust the layer mask. So you can either relink those or you can move it, reposition this image and then click the link. Now, if I try and move it, it will again move back around with the layer mask in the new position. Of course, that looks terrible, but hopefully that illustrates the idea between linking and unlinking. So if you have that little link icon there, it means that your mask and your layer mask are linked. And if you click in that space, it removes the link. So if you do unlink images for whatever reason to do any kind of work or, uh, you know, or anything within Photoshop, just make sure that if you do want to move it around again after, just remember to link that back up. And the other brilliant thing about layer masks, going back to the idea of them being non-destructive, is that, you know, if I do all this retouching and I don't actually like it and I think, oh, this is terrible, I've done a really rubbish job on cutting this out, I can simply, well, I can hold shift and left click on the layer mask and that big red cross completely hides it all together. And holding shift and left clicking again just brings that back into view. Or I can right click 
and select delete layer mask and it will delete it altogether or I can right click and select apply layer mask and it will finalize that image so effectively it combines your layer mask and your image into one uh, layer so you will lose that flexibility you have with the mask so personally that's something I don't use very often I just like to keep the layer mask because if I do make a mistake or I need to change anything I have that flexibility and I can always drag it to the trash if I don't want it anymore now if you do create adjustment layers from the bottom of the layers panel that's using this icon here you will notice that when you create one let's go hue and saturation for example we have the hue and saturation layer here and I can double click that and adjust all of the properties so we'll go for some nice blue skin there and they are created by default with a layer mask so it's the same principle we have the white at the moment so it, this hue and saturation adjustment layer is affecting our whole image but we can use black and our nice feathered brush and we can go in and you can see as I'm painting in it's affecting the layer mask and we're using that nice soft feathered brush just literally going around the skin leaving the hair as untouched as we can and I can hold shift and left click on the layer mask and it will hide that and I can do the same again and now I've created this mask I also have the flexibility to double click on the hue and saturation thumbnail and it takes me to the property window and I can adjust the color after I've applied the mask so you can see I'm adjusting the hue slider here and I've masked out all the skin and it is only affecting the hair so this is quite a cool way in that you can create your mask you can do whatever you need to whether it's a cutout just get your mask all set up in the right way and then you've got the flexibility to go and actually adjust the properties and find something that is right and there we go that's a little bit about working with layer masks in Adobe Photoshop as always guys please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below like this video if you enjoyed it take care and I'll see you next time Thank <laughs> you.